Forging a successful career path begins from your foundation. A foundation of quality and professional education. It is a weapon of transformation and a passport to the future. It marks credibility and years of training thousands of professionals in HND. BTEC, BSc, an MBA in the schools of business and management sciences, engineering and education with remarkable mentorship from the University of Bamenda for the BTEC and MBA and the University of Boya for the BSc program is second to know. From committed professors and lecturers in classrooms to numerous academic field trips, internships and workshops. HIPMAP will reform and guide you towards your success. Admissions are now open in our Boya and Douala campuses. Join us. Together, we will build a legacy. HIPMAP is what it is today because of its excellent and competent teachers. You truly HIPMAP will be the perfect place to gain that professionalism that you need to further your educational career. The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, the University Institute for Professionals. Good evening, televiewers. Uh, you are welcome to Prime R on my media. Prime this uh, Friday, the 6th of uh, November 2020. This day, we are going to be looking at the balance sheet of the President of the Republic, His Excellency. President Paul Bia, who took office on the 6th of November 1982. 38 uh, years on, what has been the balance sheet uh, as far as uh, stewarding? The nation Cameroon is. We all are living witnesses to what uh, the country is going through. Our panelists are going to tell us, uh, make their appreciations on what uh, the president has made of this uh, nation, one of uh, the finest in Africa. We are going to be talking with our panelists. Yes, they are already here, two of them. We are waiting the others to arrive. Uh, Dr. Ning Wanyam is in the house. He is a member of the ruling CPDM party. He is an educationist par excellence, a social entrepreneur. We are glad to have you with us, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is a sensitive topic we are dealing with tonight. And, uh, you know, it's so sensitive that I will try as much as possible to work on principles, not emotions. Mm. Uh, you are asking that we do a SWOT analysis of uh, the President's 38 years in power. But what I would like to call the attention of the public to is that though we are talking about the president, the president we are talking at the same time about the government. Yes. And, um, and uh, you would realize that there is, uh, when, we, when we take that whole, the government seems to have a certain mind and the president has to have a, seems to have a certain mind and a way of doing business. So we look into that. Okay. Also with us all the way from uh, Boya is Solomon Ate. He is uh, a member of the civil society and a youth for that matter. We are glad to have you. Thank you. Note and thanks for having me here. And um, at the same time, I'm glad to be with Dr. Nick here, which I respect so much. Mm. And being a member of the ruling party and has a very objective position on, on the Anglophone crisis, I would really like to seize this opportunity to appreciate him for that. I've been watching you on this platform and I've seen your objective and objective analysis and I hope that we're going to exchange here today to learn better on how we can make the country move forward. Thank you. We are expecting Barrister Achu Julius to be joining us in the course of the program and uh, Alex Angipi of the CRM movement. We expect them to join us uh, before we move uh, any distance from here. Um, 38 years of uh, President Paul Bia. Some people see it as 38 years of resilience. Uh, 38 years of resilience. I would have loved them to define what they mean by resilience. Okay. It should be 38 years of progress, mm -hmm. uh, not 38 years. Resilience, uh, resilience in the sense that probably the economy has been very tough. Resilience in the sense that uh, managing a third world country like this with when we don't have a lot of value sets in place can be of course very tricky um, difficult in the sense that you know we've had a lot of youth problems 
uh, all sorts of problems that you can think of. And um, I have taken a lot of time to meditate over these problems for a very long time. And probably that's what gives me a different perspective to what we are facing. Okay. So you think it's not been uh, resilience? The president, uh, when he took power, he was faced with the issue of the coup d'etat. We've had the economic crisis. We've had all sorts of challenges, but he's still there at the end of it. Yes, resilience in the sense that I was thinking about that too. You know, opening up and going out there and uh, letting people be. He had to okay. change strategies, so to speak, and then close up a little bit for the it's sake of security. Yeah, yeah. And I think when he did that, a lot of people around him, they went so much for, for politics and security that they f many people forgot the economic development, you know, working, f work, working to create opportunities for the youths and many other things. So at the end of the day, yeah, we can talk about resi resilience because uh, a couple of things could have been done better. Okay, a couple of things could have been done uh, better. Um, do you also see the President of the Republic as having uh, been resilient for 38 years, uh, overcoming, surmounting the different challenges uh, posed to the nation and his uh, personality? Uh, exactly, in as much as I, I disagree a lot with uh, the President and his management of the country, but equally have to be objective to understand that the President has been resilient. First of all, congratulations for being in, in power for 38 years. He himself, he said uh, in French, I'm not really good in French, but he said, uh, that means uh, for, for you to be in power for 38 years is not given to anybody. So just for that alone has been resilient. And looking at the numerous crises that we have in Cameroon today and the country is still standing tall, you have that impression that the president is still standing tall and, and being resilient. We are talking about the Anglophone crisis today. Uh, if the president was not strategic, uh, we wouldn't have been talking about the crisis that it is now. We would have been talking about a full-blown war, not just the, in the, the Anglophone crisis, but in other uh, regions of the country uh, with, uh, with the threats of taking over power from the opposition and all the security challenges that we've seen around the issues of Boko Haram and uh, the refugee crisis in the east of the country. And with all of this uh, combined, you may be tempted to think align with uh, the supporters of the president uh, and to conclude that he has been a resilient head of state. And I, I think and in peace and security wise, he's really been that resilient. Okay. He's been uh, resilient uh, at this uh, time. Uh, uh, Dr. Nick Nguanyam, now let's look at uh, this whole concept of rigor and moralization that the president came to power with uh, 38 years. Can we still be talking of uh, this whole, this concept, rigor and moralization? Uh, Has it been central in the management style of uh, President Paul Beer? In fact, you know, when the president took over power and then he came up with this uh, functional phrase, um, this caption, everybody went for it. And it made a lot of sense because, you know, there is no way you can develop as an individual, a nation, or a community, or even a business if you don't uh, stick to rigor and moralization. Rigor and moralization would therefore, in, would therefore mean that you know you are working based on truth, you are res you are working based on respect, on merit, and that love is a key issue in whatever you do. And therefore, whether in good times or in bad times, rigor and mor moralization should be part of the formula. And uh, but we get the impression that after the coup d'état, you know, he the president you know, co-opted some other people who, whom, whom I believe he thought were closer to him and would help him sail through the bad times. But these people, one gets the impression that they were, they were more interested in themselves than in common good. And we, we, we have evidence of that in the, in the president's speech in 2013, December 31st, 2013, when the president himself came out to say, you know, clearly, that Cameroonians were suffering, number one, from inertia, and number two, that many people were, in, were interested only in their personal affairs and not common good. And that is the real diagnosis that the president made in 2013. But what the president failed to do was to prescribe the treatment for that, and we are still suffering from the disease till date. Okay, so um, 
rigor and moralization uh, dissipated immediately after it took over? Yes, it dissipated immediately, and then corruption took over, favoritism, favoritism took over, non-respect of citizens and any and, and state institutions took over, and therefore we were just a ship afloat, you know, a sea and. Uh, uh, you could tell that when the president would appoint somebody in a, po a post of responsibility, that person, would, instead of working for the general good, would be working more for himself. He would take the, he would take, be it a corporation or a ministry, he would take it as though he, it was his private business. And then in some of those corporations, the people have stayed there for donkey years, and at the end of the day, they can't tell tell that it's a state, a state property and they think it is their own or it belongs to the f village or the family or whatever. So most of these ills now became um, uh, ingrained in the system. Okay, uh, we also have just been joined by Ingenie Elvis Bane, the National Communication Secretary for the Popular Action Party. Good evening and welcome. And I will start by asking you your appraisal of 30, uh, President Bia's 38 years uh, stay at the helm of Cameroon. Yeah, good evening, uh, sir. Good evening to all three viewers of my friend. Uh, 38 years in power. Yeah, to me, can we see it's a national catastrophe. To me, it's a disaster, and it is rather to, to me it's a day that Cameroonians are supposed to mourn because Mr. Bia accession to power in 1982 till date. Like we say, that is close to 40. But I don't think that there is anything that we can really write home with as far as his leadership is concerned. Yeah, why, why, why would you say so? He's been there. I'm sure there are some major strides that have been made in some quarters, if not all. Well, except you can help me maybe cite some of such because uh, when I just came in, I got one of my panelists. I'm sorry, sir. I will get you into knowing your name. He said um, uh, he was congrat. Okay, Mr. Ati. Hmm. He said he was congratulating Mr. Bia for being there for 30 years. years. Yeah. Now, I don't think Cameroon is Mr. Bia's personal property. That we should sit there for 38 years and we are out to congratulate him. Now, it's not like even saying that 38 years we could not congratulate him if he were doing the right thing, you see. But the problem is that after 38 years, like I've said, they, I don't see anything. Cameroonians are lamenting, be it in education, be it in the, in the domain of employment, be it in the security, and even now coupled with the Anglophone crisis and other issues. I say Cameroonians are all crying foul to what this regime has brought upon Cameroonians. And like I said, except you may help me or any other Cameroonian could convince me by citing what Mr. Bia has done, I still think that this day is a day when we should be, be mourning rather than celebrating. And when we talk about celebration, you cannot be celebrating someone's day, let me call it someone's birthday, when the person himself is not even present. Where is Mr. Bia today? At least this is a day when he could even come out and then maybe address the nation, address the situation in the northwest and the southwest regions. These are children we kicked in Kumba last 24th October, but he's nowhere to be found. If he has overtrack, we see a tweet. I, and I often like to ask this question. Are those tweets even from him? I don't think that we can be appreciating someone as a leader who is nowhere to be found. And when we've overtried, we see that his effigies that are hung in offices and then we say we are celebrating. No, I don't think so. No, it's uh, 38 years of uh, President Paul Bia as uh, President of the Republic of Cameroon. Uh, is he there for 38 years because Cameroonians uh, want him to be there? Like he said, that you are, it is not he who wants to be president, but he who can. Um, or the fact that he loves power, he really wants to be there for 38 years. I think that there is a difference between the legality and legitimacy. Mm. Uh, president Paul Bia is legally the president of Cameroon, but I sincerely doubt if he is legitimately the president of Cameroon. Uh, be, because uh, it, it, is, uh, uh, it is surprising to see that for 38 years, Cameroonians do not believe in another person, yeah, and they just believe in, an, in one person. And these same Cameroonians are the ones who decry every day the Anglophones are decrying of marginalization. These people are, uh, are decrying of poor infrastructure. The other people are decrying of this and that. But at the same time, uh, when elections come up, you see, uh, you, you see the president winning a landslide victory of 75%, 85%, 90%, and you ask yourself if uh, at all other people are really interested in, in, in getting political position or becoming president in Cameroon, or these people are not known by Cameroonians, or is it like they actually do not have a political agenda or they don't have a manifesto to sell to the people? But I think it's something far than that. 
somebody might be there for 38 years. I, I'm sorry, my brother, when you came in, I congratulated the president. But there's a difference between congratulating the president for being there for 38 years and congratulating him for actually doing the job that Cameroonians are doing. So when I say congrat uh, congratulations, it doesn't simply mean that I endorse him for being there for 38 years. So I, I was in the, uh, congratulating him within the context of resilience. And so for somebody to be there for 38 years, it means that the person is re resilient. But the question now is, has, has the president been able to do what uh, the, the people want? I, I think that in, in the context of education, the president has succeeded to create seven out of, of seven universities out of the 10 uh, region that we have in Cameroon. And when you look at the literacy, literacy rate in Cameroon, it is uh, far beyond uh, some other countries in Africa. We are going, compared to, look at, we are going to look at uh, those uh, yeah, areas. So uh, at the end, some of these things, may, you may be tempted to think that the president uh, is there because the people won, but the, uh, the underlying truth is that there is some malaise that the people are suffering, and if the democratic process was as free as it is being said, I don't think it would have been still there. Okay, he would not have been there. Let's look at uh, democracy. Can uh, President Paul be here today? Uh, can he be called the father of democracy in Africa because some multipartism was reintroduced into Cameroon in the early 90s uh, while he was uh, acting and still acting as president of uh, the Republic? And then what has been uh, the your appreciation of the democratic process, the democratic instruments in Cameroon? You see, when, we, when, we, when you mentioned democracy and Cameroon, then we must, we must define the the elements that we are using to define that concept of democracy. If we are going by the number of political parties and you know that there are 350 of them, then you will say that we are champions in Africa. I mean, you cannot have 350 political parties and you are not the first in democracy. That will, be, that will not be fair. Um, but if you are talking democracy in terms of uh, what really happens, then one would doubt it because for that democracy to be advanced and mature, we don't need more than five political parties. So those 350 political parties is a, is a, is a, is a digression from truth, is a diversion from truth. And in, in as much as we have 350 political parties, don't forget that it's not the president who created those parties for those people. They are Cameroonians, very greedy Cameroonians, who 350 of them, each of them were looking for power. And you know if Barista Achu was here, if Barista Achu is even enc encouraging each and every one of us who disagrees, you know, to go create their own party and so on. <laughs> so you see, it's just, it's just diversionary tactics like this. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the whole thing is watered down. And then, so when you say, oh, there's no democracy in Cameroon, you say there's no democracy, 350 political parties, what do you want? It's a great, it's a great move. But the bottom line is that all those 350 political parties, they are all greedy fellows. So, so as long as you are dealing with greedy fellows, there is no, I mean, forget about them. And besides, you know what, when, because I've been meditating a lot, I said something the other day on, on, on social media, and I will say it here. Watch me. If you take the problems, when you take the problems of Africa and Cameroon and really go through them, you would see that everybody is excited about politics. But that excitement about politics is not because people really want to take care of common good. The politics in Africa is just like there is this enterprise that has all the goodies, and anybody who fights and gets there can feed himself and his family. That's the way I say it. Because we all depend on the natural resources, this, 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 and that. But the bottom line is out of those 350 political parties, including the SDF, the MRC, and all those uh, cabras and all those people who makes, make noise, None, I said none of them has what it takes to get this country out of the mess. All they are looking for is that, you know, it doesn't matter how President Paul be, how good he would be, throw, throw banana peelings and rotten eggs at him, at him, get him out of the way, get in there and sit in there and also feed yourself and your family. That's all they're interested in. Now, how do I get to that conclusion? You know, it takes, it takes the right education it takes the right education for a people to be mature. 
It takes the right education. And unfortunately, Cameroon has had the wrong education for a very long time. So you see, a lot of these people who are talking, if we brought them on the platform here and say, tell us how you fix this problem, tell us how you fix this one, tell us how you fix this one, tell us how you fix this one, and ask them deep, deep entrepreneurial questions they wouldn't answer. So this is the problem with Africans and Cameroonians, as I said before. Number one, they don't understand problems, not at all. Number two, they don't know how to solve problems because you cannot solve what you didn't understand. And number three, they don't know how to create wealth because technically, that's what the government is all about. And when you create wealth, by creating wealth, you put in mechanisms and whatever in, in the environment and make things happen and make entrepreneurs grow and make the private sector take over the civil service and make sure that accountability is, is, is top form and make sure that there is respect, make sure that things are yielding fruit but here we are with a set of people who don't understand. And a great indicator is that the President Paul Bia has been in a real mess in the sense that you can see the number of governments he has tried to put in place. But each government comes up, but everybody is interested only in their mouth and their pockets. Mm -hmm. So he keeps going this merry-go-round, merry-go-round, hoping that there will be a change. And there can, no be, there can be no change because, like I said, the education, the basic information education that we have in Cameroon is wrong. It's not as good as the education in South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore. Finland, where people are responsible <coughs> and know how to solve problems, understand problems, and can create wealth. As long as you cannot create wealth in the country, forget it. Okay. Uh, Esther, writing from Yaoundé, says, uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu and co panelist uh, Mr. Bia has tried to we accept, but he should uh, let another person to also try. Uh, it's too much. We are tired. Okay. Uh, Esther, good evening. And uh, to you, Anita. And Otakang says, Good evening to you all. Uh, it's dark already and no speech yet from the president. We are still waiting to pop the 38th uh, anniversary champagne. <laughs> no, the president of the republic does not <laughs> deliver speeches uh, during such occasions. Um, it's the militants who are celebrating, who are supposed to celebrate. But this year here, uh, a communique was issued that there are going to be no uh, uh, open celebrations. Uh, Dr. Nick, I don't know whether I can confirm that uh, information or when uh, Barrister Achu Julius comes, he just indicated that he's on his way, his way coming. I think uh, Barrister uh, Julius should talk about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should know. When we look at the President of the Republic uh, for 38 years, most of his collaborators, many of them are in prison today. Uh, <coughs> are we saying that he lacks um, good judgment on those with whom to work? Because he appointed most of them. Uh, that's a very excellent question. And uh, I will say that for you to appoint collaborators and uh, at the end of each person's term of office, mm. he finds himself behind bars. It points out to the fact that the person who is behind bars is not the problem, the you who appointed that person. Why do I say so? You cannot appoint one, two, three, four, five governments and each time they leave office, they end in prison. It means that you yourself, you lack the judgment of the person that you brought into your own government. So again, it comes back to what I started by saying that I don't see anything to celebrate with Mr. Jacob because uh, there are Cameroonians who can do far better off than the person she has been working with. But ironically, like doctor was just saying, the irony here is that he has been dealing with the same group of persons. Even when doctors say that he has changed many governments, ironically, you discover that he changes government, but they are the same persons. Somebody goes to the Ministry of Sunday Education today, fails, and then in the next government, he goes to higher education, fails. The next moment, he's going to scientific research, the same person. Is it like saying that we don't support that Cameroonians who could do certain things? I don't think so. But the problem is that, like Dr. Dailey said here, it is a government where people are fighting for self-interest and not the interest, the general interest of the Cameroonians. And so at the end of the day, Mr. Bia is comfortable with the clique of friends that he has around him because they best understand themselves and they know how to go about despoiling the national cake. Mm -hmm. What was supposed to be shared for every other person has become their personal something. And now, Remember that most of those who are even behind bars today, at one point in time, you understand that it is more of a political issue even, and not even, it's true that they embezzled, but when you even end up behind bars, it's more of a political issue, maybe for those who start, they, uh, let me say, who at the end of the day no longer toe the line, as wanted by the creator who created them there. Because even those who are in government today are not safe, they are all corrupt ministers. 
There are people who are all their hands are all stained with corruption in one way or the other. There are people who we, we've seen their lapses. Take uh, when, when, when you listen to some of our ministers today talk. At one point, then you even start questioning even their level of education. You start questioning how did they even get to where they, 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 they are today as ministers. But like we say, ironically, he will change the government and you will find the same persons either maintaining office or maybe sh simply sh sh uh, shifting to the next office. So I don't want to think that the problem here, uh, there is one Cam uh, Cameroonian, I think that was Barry, uh, the Batonier uh, Akeremuna, who once uh, said something, and I will try to maybe just paraphrase. He said, if you buy a book, for instance, and you bring it to your home and it, it, it gets blown off and you buy the second and the same thing happens you buy the third the same thing happens at least you should be able to stop for once to find out if the problem is not the connection in your house you should not you should it should not look like you want to prove to the to the world that you can buy all the bulbs in the market by simply buying the bulbs repeatedly without trying to find out why they keep uh, get, getting back so something could be wrong with the, with, the, with the connections in your home so mr Diaz's regime for 38 years has been a catastrophe because he has worked with practically the same persons. But remember, we are in a country where we have even young Cameroonians today who have proven their worth. Go back internationally. There is no Cameroonian you will find out there who is not excelling in his own field, in his own domain. But why do those people not come back home to work? Because the government does not give room for people who know and who can better apply themselves in their respective areas. On the contrary, it is a government that goes with mediocrity. They prefer people who are loyal to an individual than being loyal to their country. So if you come into Mr. Diaz's government and you prove that you can work to better save the interests of Cameroonians, at the end of the day, you rather become a problem to him and his regime. And I think that's just where the problem lies. Yeah, but, but uh, why don't you also think that uh, the collaborators appointed by President Povia were taken by greed and end up disappointing the President of the Republic? Um, I, mean, I may not want to put the full blame on President Bia, um, because if you look at the context under which Cameroon operates, mm. we, first of all, need to understand that individual responsibilities are given. But it is how you take your responsibility and make it people-centered and party-centered. That's why you know the difference between uh, the governance of Bia and his people. The collaborators seem to have, um, most of his collaborators, I call it the cabal, uh, seem to have uh, made the, the, the governance system of Cameroon seem person, a person-centered. And by so doing, they don't take personal initiative. If you remember very well, I think it should be 2015 or 14, no, 2013, President Bia made a speech and complained about inertia. And he was talking about, uh, complaining about his own government. It, it therefore tells you that he's kind of frustrated because if a president can ask, why is it that people are not doing this? He talked about administrative bottlenecks. Yeah, he raised and the issue that things that work easily, easily elsewhere. elsewhere. but it doesn't work here. Mm -hmm. It shows that he had that good, he has that good feeling. But sometimes when you put in policies, uh, people tend to want to play around with politics. You know that a government doesn't function as many of us see it. Sometimes we see it as it's greener over the fence, but when you are in the system, you may feel like sometimes it's difficult for you, for him to take adequate action because of the fact that you may not want to jeopardize your sitting in position as head of state. You may not want to jeopardize your sitting in position within your, your, your region. But my problem comes with the individual administrators like uh, we see with the various ministers, they did not ask ministers to be quoting the Bible left and right. They did not ask ministers to stay and uh, go on a trip twice in a particular area which they should have gone once. Uh, they did not ask uh, the SDO in FACO to, and the DO to be issuing, uh, dealing with lands and left and right. They simply gave them the position that do this as a job. But when we see how administrative officials go about carrying their activities, it is kind of bringing a policy where it is more of man-centered than people-centered. There is a policy that they have inculcated in Cameroon, and they have redefined patriotism. Oh, Cameroon, cradle of our fathers, thou holy shower, shall reign in amidst the narrow post. There's a part I love so much in the ante Leonard. Dear fatherland, there was no tongue can tell. But when you look at the way the ministers are governing, it gives me to a question whether they have gone to the to the details of the anthem, which is supposed to be the result death as to why we are here. Because when you look at the world, no tongue can tell. And look at the world we are seeing now from the ministers, the world we are seeing from the government. It is truly that no tongue can tell within the system of governance. Because it's not just Bia we should blame here. It is collective. Leona, even individually, we have problems. Individual Cameroonians, they claim they, they keep blaming Bia Bia. But when you look at how they govern their Jange groups, when you look at how they govern their institutions, when you look at how they govern their, their, their various associations that they are, you are tempted to ask a question. 
is this person be here? Look at the Professor Maurice Camto. Look at his cabinet. The worst is when you look at how he's structured, it is more than he's more of President Bia. If you try assessing Camto resident or to get a contact of Camto, if you are in this Dwala, you have to call someone in Dwala who will call someone in Yaounde, who will call someone and book an audience, and you finally meet Professor Maurice Camto, your phones will be taken off, and you are asked to see you see, you see a kind of system, and you ask, we blame Bia Bia at the end of the day. We, it is to me this 38th anniversary is a moment of reflection as each individual, as each Cameroonian. If we are blaming Bia, we are Bia in our own endeavors that we do. We are Bia in our own homes. Some of us are even worse than Bia in our homes. But we keep looking at Bia up there. But when we start from ground level, I think we should start from the bottom, the uh, bottom approach before going to the top. A, a bottom top approach is better. How do we do this by individually, Doctor Nick and everybody in this panel? Start by individual, the, the different sector. Morning, good governance, good leadership. We start harnessing. That's how it goes like a spiral effect. But to me, however, I want to conclude on this by saying that Bia is not a problem. Cameroonians are the problem because the day they will decide that the actions will be taken. That's just to me. To me, they are still in the dark. <coughs> okay. That's the, in the dark. Some people uh, see the, the presidency of President Paul Bia as uh, one that is uh, based on slogans. We started with rigor, rigor and moralization. Yeah. We had uh, greater ambitions, greater realizations, greater everything. Uh, but on <laughs> the ground, seemingly, we don't feel it. Exactly. Uh, the most uh, the, the most paradoxical part of it is the rigor moralization part of it. Uh, when the president, came, I, I I wasn't alive at that time. It was unfortunate that I came up and I saw I saw a president who has been there for long, and I'm now a mature person, and the president is still there. I don't even know when he's going to go. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a big paradox. And I heard that he came up with a rigor moralization policy, uh, but today we we, we see it. Uh, the the the, f the anti-corruption struggle of President Paul Bia. From my own analysis, I look at it as if it was more of a, a political s a settlement of scores that takes place there. Because uh, so somebody said here that if so some things keep happening over and over with the ministers, then something is wrong with the head. And I think that that is where uh, the problem is. The, the president cannot claim that he appoints people that he does not know. Because I happen to have volunteered in a civil society organization where I was charged with the, the recruitment process of that organization. It was a privilege for me to be in charge of the recruitment process of that organization. But if they tell me, Solomon recruit an, uh, a communication officer, I will not go and recruit somebody who has a background in banking and finance and ask that person to become a communication officer. It means that I do not know what I'm doing. But we've seen uh, people in this country who have held sensitive positions like communication, who do not have a mastery of communication. And in times of crisis, you find those people going about inflaming uh, the crisis up to where we are today in the Northwest and Southwest region. Who thought that uh, communication is about handling iron? Human beings are like iron, where you bend them with force and then they respect you. So it, 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 it has been more about like slogans instead of putting the real actions into place, and we've come to be the victims of these uh, slogans all over. Uh, we're going to be to be uh, uh, having greater achievement. We are going to be having greater from greater ambitions. We have the greater ambitions to greater achievement. I don't know this latest one today because uh, it looks like every presidential election we come up with uh, a slogan. Yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 we we're done with the great achievements, and now there is another slogan yeah, that I can. Real, realization. That's the French version of great achievement. And so I don't know the, which one we are today. Uh, and we have lived on slogan up to the the point where we have been given the chance to host the Nations Cup and we use slogans and the slogans finally failed us. So I think that there is a problem in this country where we need uh, to address okay. the problem of indiscipline. Okay. We, 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 we fail to discipline people who have not delivered. When somebody has not delivered, instead of us disciplining that person, we promote that person. What does that tell you? It tells you that if you give me a position in as much as I will not respect the rules, if as much as I will not respect, I should keep on singing praises to the president and then I get promoted. That is why we are promoting. Good evening, Mr. Kum. This is Justice Long Longang writing from Idea, my friend. I promise to come to Idea. I will definitely be there, I'm <coughs> sure, next week. A person with a big head should be ready to receive knocks. Mr. Bia has been <laughs> resilient, and he is a good leader and not a leader for good. We can't say he has done <laughs> nothing bad. <laughs> to be genuine, let him and others be mentors to youths who want to step 
up from where he is now, a leader for who is one who is willing to develop people to the point that they surpass him and her, and her in knowledge and ability not staying in power for long. As concerning the bottom to top, uh, Jarvis is saying he should not forget that when the source of a stream is dirty, people can't carry clean water from the streams. Stop calling, please. Uh, good evening to you, my bro. Good evening, Mr. Liu. It's Elvis from Limbe, the town of friendship. I pray God continue to give you the power to do what you guys are doing. They say it is good to leave uh, the stage when people still applaud for you. Mr. Bia should step down. He's tired. Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, Elvis uh, from Limbe, good evening to you. Tabot Makaveli writing from Yaoundé. Say greetings, everyone, and happy 38th anniversary to the President of the Republic. For 38 years, <coughs> what's Cameroon? A small nation among third world countries doing with more than 80 ministerial positions, minister delegates and assistant ministers, and so on. What is the use of the Senate? Because it's a drainage uh, to the economy. Thank you, uh, Tabot uh, Makia. Very uh, from Yaoundé. Yeah, now, we are looking at the President of uh, the Republic, and do you think, like some people, that he's been elevated to the position of a god? Because uh, Nobody says anything from their mindset. Everything is with high instructions from the <laughs> President of the Republic. Even if you were to interview a principal today, the principal would, would quote the President of the Republic. It's, um, it's just an unfortunate um, outcome. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people do not speak their minds. They speak out of fear. Mm -hmm. They speak out of emotions. And they don't do things the way they are expected to do them. So, like I was saying, you know, the government is responsible for the politics, okay, and then the economy. The politics actually is just about putting in mechanisms for achieving something, some development and some economic progress and that. But we have forgotten about development, we have forgotten about economics, we have forgotten about education and everything, and we've concentrated on politics. How do we go from one season to the other? And then many people discover that if you spend, even if you are a civil servant, a minister, or if you spend 60% of your time, time trying to show that you love the president more than your brother over there. Then next time when, when they're looking at things, they will say you are, you, are, you are a genuine person just because you sing harder and then you defend the president everywhere. So people have forgotten what they should concentrate on. What I'm, what I'm saying is this. When the president puts someone in place, the president expects you to be delivering, to be working. So technically, if you love the president and you want the president to succeed, and you want the president to be loved by everybody, and you want the government to be seen to be very good, what you do is to work, work in a manner that God will appreciate your work. Work in a manner that every other Cameroonian will love you. Like, like I think it's, I, I can't remember whether it's um, somebody junior who said in America, if you are a sweeper, sweep be the best sweeper if you are a cook be the best cook if we are the best of ourselves at everything that we are doing we will not be where we are it's because a lot of people are fake fake you know there was one minister who was saying Fimba grass the other day you know people are fake people fake <laughs> you know, so many fake people even up there so it's, it's very disheartening fake from morning to evening that's the problem Oh God, I feel pain. See, the minister said what? Fimba grass. Fimba Fimba grass or something like that. I don't know where she came from. She looked crazy a lot. Honestly, I don't want to talk about them. There are a lot of primitive people in that thing. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the president is doing everything possible to fight corruption uh, so that uh, the concept of rigor and moralization holds water as far as uh, his gov governance of the country is uh, concerned. But when you look at uh, the fight for corruption and you look at what is happening in our secondary schools now, in our hospitals, you think that um, corruption is effectively being fought in Cameroon? Well, I don't know why you are citing secondary schools and uh, hospitals only. For example, I say for example. <coughs> 
corruption is something that has come to stay in Cameroon. That's what I can rather say. Because um, uh, when you look at even the institutions put in place to fight that same corruption uh, by the head of state, how effective are those institutions? That is the question we should be asking. Mm -hmm. They are not effective in fighting the corruption because take Kunak, for instance, they will tell you, for instance, that there are certain personalities that for you to follow them up and maybe charge them of being corrupt or not, you need authorization. Again, you need some permits coming from the presidency and all not. And we know how it all happens in Cameroon. People, someone is somebody somewhere because he has somebody to defend his interest. And so when you go towards somebody whom you think is corrupt, and there is another person high up there in office who will call you and tell you to forget to close that fire, to keep it aside, then I don't see how corruption, uh, we can see, is effective. Remember that Cameroon today, perhaps, is the only country where you hear a young Cameroonian in the quarters openly tell you that if they were to appoint him in an office, he would prefer to embezzle and go into prison, and then the family enjoys what he has, embezzled. When you hear a young Cameroonian, when you hear a youth tell you such a thing, it is to tell you that the crime has gone to a point where they know that even those that we, they, they pretentiously tell us are behind bars because they embezzled or whatever thing, they are, they, 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 we rather transform them to stars. Because a petty thief in the quarter who steals a goat is, is, is killed the very next second. Mm -hmm. But when you find someone who embezzles 50 billion, he's rather put a level to the proof of a star where he has bodyguards, they parade him on TV, he has a special uh, air conditioning room in, in, in the so-called prison, he can go out at will and stroll and buy from whatever supermarket he so desires. So at the end of the day, are we fighting corruption? And that's why you hear youth in the country openly tell you that if they were appointed somewhere, they would prefer to embezzle. It tells you that we are simply, uh, the, the, the society today is almost working as a reflection of what the regime has, uh, of what Mr. Bia incarnates. And it comes back to what my brother said, there, and I would like to disagree with him, when he says uh, it, it begins from bottom to top. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. In French, they say, tout poisson pourri par la tête. It begins from up there. You cannot be up there if you are a leader. Who is a leader? You are supposed to be the person to trace the roadmap. You are supposed to be the person to inspire people. You are supposed to be the person to see into it that what you desire for your people is achieved. But like we were saying a few minutes ago, if you keep appointing the wrong persons who embezzle and you maintain them in government, then honestly, I don't think that you are doing anything good for the country. And uh, you talk about reflection. The only person whom I think should be reflecting actually today in this country is Mr. Bia himself. He should sit down and reflect. The ADS in power, what has he done for Cameroon? Nothing. He needs to reflect, and I think the only thing he can do as of now is to resign. Corruption, I, like I say, has come to stay as far as Mr. Bia Paul is concerned because even till now, as we are talking presently, there are people in their offices signing documents, not because the documents they are signing would be to the best interest of the country, but they are signing documents to fake receipts and checks and all one not when you go to a minister's office and you see the number of um, uh, of bonds that they have for petrol then you begin to wonder if they use the jets to leave their homes and go to their offices in the morning okay good evening mr Liu. right on with uh, your work may god bless uh, you we shouldn't really blame our president but rather the people under him money is writing from amanda Good evening, uh, Mr. Liu. Good evening, Jarvis. I love the way you talk, but you spoiled it at the end. All the same, Mr. Paul Bia is to blame. If Cameroonians think like uh, that, it's uh, the type of education he brought to Cameroon. Clovis is writing from Mutengene. Greetings, uh, Mr. Liu. There is uh, practically nothing good to say about him. Cha, what we need in this nation is... Uh, God, okay. Hello, good evening, uh, sir. I'm Eric Wheezy. In fact, we are tired. You should go and give space for another person. He has appeared. Uh, you see the war in the northwest and southwest. He cannot solve because he used all strategy in solving uh, the problem. Thank you. Please make your messages short uh, to the point. When they are long, I can't read them. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Jacqueline, writing from Bermuda, and I love. Your program, please let Mr. Bia get rid of old ministers and bring in new young blood. Let them be freedom of speech, press, and uh, that's democracy. Do you also think, like uh, she's writing from women, that, that the president of the republic has maintained the very old persons around the government apparatus? 
Um, to say that they've maintained, I think, is an understatement because we understand that one of the characteristics for you to uh, be in, in top position of this country, mm -hmm. you must be of the ancestral generation. You must be of a certain kind of born at a, uh, early 1907 or kind of stuff like that. Um, I think um, if I go by what we see now, that's why you see uh, ministers will go and bury the belief, and you see they will <laughs> say Faku is in Kumba, is in Faku because of the, the age factor. It's not because of the fact that they are though It's just the age factor. You know, I think age factor has a great role to play. Uh, secondly, Luna, I want to look at the issue of the government. The government has uh, done a lot, but in terms of bringing in these old people, um, to me, I don't see it as very important in terms of developing the country because they, they, they think as far as things were as it was before, so it is now, and so should it be. But they don't understand that we are in a rapidly changing world, what we call a homo exertion. We are no longer in a homo sapien age. We are in a homo exertion. Homo exertion means a practicing man. That means man keep evolving, developing from IQ to IQ, from knowledge to different level. So things that used to apply in 1990, policies that used to apply in 1990, virtually those policies will not apply in 2020, will not apply in 2035. And the policy of 20 will not even apply in 2035 even when Cameroon emerged. By so doing, you need to have a plan as to who takes uh, over various ministries. I'm not against the old people taking part because it's an age comes with wisdom. And when you have this age, uh, we believe that it comes with wisdom. However, there should be a kind of sandwich in terms of Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation. Some kind of ministry should be piloted by people within a particular age range that cut across between the semi uh, ancestral and the new age period such that these persons can now quote and bring in modalities that will fit into. You know, we have ministers who cannot open a Gmail, who cannot access a Gmail. We have ministers who cannot send a simple email. Now, it, it, we are in a world that everything is now more of email. Everything is virtual. Mm. We keep talking about virtual. That's why you see um, online education is still a problem in Cameroon. It's a massive problem because they believe that education must be a full wall of classroom. Thus, even when you come with a, a certificate that you, you may have acquired from a virtual learning, they feel like it's not important and you do not study. But when you look at the context of other countries, who has these ministers with uh, level head that they see online education is something they have embraced. Then in Cameroon, it's still not a but it's thanks to Corona. I want to say a big thanks to Corona. We have gradually embraced, embraced online education, and they are now shifting policies on online education. That should tell you that the world is rapidly changing. So we need people who can adapt to this constantly, rapidly changing world. Okay. But I want to s just conclude by saying what he said, that when the source of the water is dirty, you cannot drink water. Water is water. And secondly, you can go and clean the source if you know that this is where the source comes from. Okay. Okay. Um, 38 years. 38 years, President Paul Bia has been fighting corruption, yet we are amongst the top ranking corrupt countries <laughs> in the world. He is not competent <coughs> like his ministers. Kru is writing from Mutengene. Good evening, Mr. Kum, and uh, to all the panelists. I think what the CPDM did today in the name of anniversary is actually the funeral of Mr. Bia. How can they be celebrating the President's 38th anniversary and he himself is not present? And we are not told why he is absent. When what do you what do Yaoundé take us for? Rosemary writing from Bomenda. Good evening to you, Rosemary. Good evening uh, to you there in the studio. I'm Zong James writing from Womb. I want to congratulate Dr. Nick for I doubt if he really a CPD militant. He is just the type of person that we want in this uh, country for it to move forward. I pity what uh, Chavis is saying that the president can't be blamed. Oh, I doubt him. Is he saying that if a father fails to bring up the children in good, uh, shouldn't he shouldn't be blamed? Uh, good evening, Prem. Uh, I love the program, Mr. Javis. Right on. I'm coldest uh, kid writing from uh, Bamenda. Okay, now let's look at um, the efficiency of the government. The president appoints a government, and when once you embezzle, we have prime ministers who are in in prison. We have uh, the biggest of ministers, ministers of public health, education, and are there. Yes, but how efficient are those who are there now? Do we think that they are learning or they, have, they are also afraid not to falter so that they, they accompany others in, in Konengi? Uh, uh, earlier made mention of the fact that we recruit people in positions without even examining their criteria to know if they fit in that position. And I took an example of ministers of communication who have, did, uh, who have done everything possible to inflame 
of the angry phone crisis in the northwest and southwest region because they didn't master the art of communication in times of crisis. There was a, a time where your communication becomes more diplomatic than ever. But in, in 2016, 2017, uh, where uh, the, the, the angry phone crisis escalated, we expected more from the communication minister and, and, and the others uh, who accompanied him in most of the press conferences, and we did not see uh, him playing the role of, uh, of, of that communicator who comes out to communicate for the sake of peace. So it, 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 it cuts across uh, most of the ministries today uh, who have been there in looking at, uh, at your performance in the field. You cannot actually measure the performance. We're talking about uh, the online learning system. Uh, where it's been implemented, uh, it's, it's, it's a policy now, but the, the, the question is, in reality, is it being implemented? I'm a, I'm a student at the University of Boya, and okay. we happen to have... You going to say you're a member of the CPDM? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a member of the CPDM, I'm a member of the University of... I'm a student at the University of Boya, mm -hmm. and I happen to have taken part in the online system, and what I came to realize is that we, the, 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 the authorities uh, quickly uh, endorsed the online system without doing a necessary assessment of whether it's going to be implemented. We shouldn't just copy things from people abroad and say what works in America can actually work in Cameroon. We didn't do a thorough assessment <coughs> to look at uh, the income of the students who, who will be taking these online courses to see if they can even afford how many of them even have, uh, have uh, 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 Android phones that can stay connected. How many of them even have, lap have laptops? We, we saw some laptops that were distributed. I don't want to go into that debate because it's the debate of its own uh, with all the things that we know about the laptops. And today, we have ministers who have uh, come out with policies, sweeping policies, and they sound very sweet, but the implementation stage of it is a problem. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we are going to have these same ministers who are being promoted, and some of them are going to be sent in jail as set uh, the, 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 the anti-corruption process to me seems like it's more about settlement of scores. Some okay. people uh, are found wanting, but they have not been arrested. Some people have been arrested and sent to jail. Mm -hmm. But you realize that these people who have been arrested and sent to jail, you are expecting that the money should come in. But they are instead there in prison, and the penitentiary is instead using our money to maintain them there in prison, and, and using that money to maintain them in high-profile prisons instead of making sure that this money comes back to us so that we can invest in. We are instead using that money to keep them there in prison. So I, I, I think that the anti-corruption struggle to me seems to be more of a, 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 a show instead okay. of the reality. Good ministers, I would rather suggest uh, that all of you are on the panel except the school proprietor should uh, address the president, Grandpapa Bia, <laughs> and not Mr. Bia. I'm George in uh, Douala. <laughs> okay, uh, George, good evening. Good evening, uh, Mr. Liu. All the achievements of the CPDM has been shattered because uh, Mr. Bia has failed to solve the crisis in the Northwest and Southwest. That is why it is good to leave the stage when the applause is loudest. And Ngong, uh, writing from Tunga, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Aza Nelson, writing from Douala vil Village. Let Mr. Bia step down and give a young man who can take Cameroonians out of uh, this mess. Uh, okay. Good evening. We have we in Fundong love your TV programs. Ndong Rene, writing from Fundong. Thank you. Ndong, good evening to you and everyone watching us from uh, Fundong in Boyo Division. Hello, Mr. Liu. I mostly blame Cameroonians for they don't master their job in the Cameroon government. President Bia will appoint a minister, and the minister will want the president to tell him what to do in every situation <laughs> or when there is a problem. Today, if Bia says he wants to dialogue with the separatists, those who are saying no dialogue will be the first to clap for him. I salute Dr. Ngwanyam. Benwellem Collins, Kajo, okay, writing from Chang. Uh, President Paul Baird is true. May everybody is saying that uh, he's aged, uh, but uh, many people looked with uh, so much uh, enthusiasm and expectations they're putting in place of some institutions, uh, like the Senate that has been set up. He has created the Commission for Bilingualism to help him <coughs> solve some of the problems. And uh, when you look at the National Assembly itself, the leadership, the person who is at the helm, he has been there for decades. Do you think that uh, the president is helpless himself? Because 
all these persons are placed there on party lines now and he is the national president how have these persons helped president Bia achieve uh, some of the policies set in place and if they are not delivering why maintain them then you remember i told you that cameroon has a problem and um, when you look back <coughs> this now is um you just said why mm -hmm. and that clicked something in my mind you see, there are some basic questions that we all, as managers, entrepreneurs, family heads, or people who want to go somewhere, there are a set of three questions that you always have to be asking. What? What is it all about? Why? And how? These three questions. If you want to go far, you must be asking these questions about anything. The why questions. The why. So you are asking why so let's ask the question why is president Pobi are always putting in these commissions is because there are some problems to be solved why are the commissions not delivering the commissions are not delivering because the people who are put there don't even know what it's all about why because the, of the bad school system why because they're there only for themselves are you seeing the, how it comes about and you can now understand why everything is failing and it's very unfortunate. You know, President Paul Bia has only one brain, only one head, and two hands. And therefore, when there are, when there, when there are, when, when there are problems that are r relatively well defined or not, he puts in place a commission or a, a set of people to be able to handle those problems. But the unfortunate thing about those commissions is that they are put there based on political, uh, political leanings and not competence. Yes, but how can the president be very comfortable with uh, the, when you look at the president of the Senate today and even the way the, the Senate functions? No, uh, but I know are that... Are you comfortable with it? No, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm developing a theory. Okay. <laughs> so, <coughs> you see, someone said that we have 80, 80 ministers or people related in that, that we don't need them. You need actually only 20 ministers in this country and then some of the other support ministers. If you, by, the time you, by the time you have gone beyond 30, you have done too much. So you can already tell that all that bulk of ministers is not helping. Number two, the Senate, watch my lips, is no use. It's who, whoever, doesn't matter who is there, it's no use. Number two, Commission of Bilingualism is absolutely no use. Number three, uh, Social and Economic Council. I, I went to a university in 1977 till today I'm 64 years old. Don't ask me what they do, I don't know. They are no use. Then, I was, I was reflecting very much on Enam. If you look very carefully at what we call Cameroon, the problems of Cameroon, 80% of the problems of Cameroon are caused by Enam. Now, because <coughs> when you go to Enam, what they put in their head is <coughs> maintaining law and order. That's all they have in their heads, law and order. But technically, law and order means discipline. <coughs> But you can be, when you are disciplining your child in the house, then you must be training that child to grow. And um, I was looking for a practical example to explain this law and order. You know, most of us have seen these big cars that have problems sometimes. So when, when a car is going uphill and the engine is not doing very well, you know, the motorboy comes to the back of the and puts a plank or some stone to wedge the car so it doesn't roll back. That is what law and order is. Don't roll back. Stay where it is. So these people are trained to keep the vehicle where it is, but they are not trained to move the, the vehicle forward. That's the problem. And therefore, the country needs, while you are keeping law and order, you have to be turning the engine so that the vehicle is going forward. They don't know how to drive the nation forward. By driving the nation forward is about understanding problems, solving problems, creating wealth, and so on. So you see, many of these things are just there, and we go running around in circles because we understand nothing about how things ought to happen. And the only way to do it is if you develop an entrepreneurial spirit and an entrepreneurial mind. Who's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone who, 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 who identifies problems in the community, and then he, he, he sits there and pulls the resources around him and uses his head to cook, to bake a cake to solve that problem of hunger. And in solving that problem, he gets paid. But unfortunately, we have a country of civil servants, and our university systems have been so poor. You go, you have people training in this subject, philosophy, the history over there, geography over there. You go and get a PhD, you don't know what to do with it. So we have just messed up, wasted time, wasted resources, wasted a lot, and we are going nowhere. That is a huge problem, and we need to recraft everything. Why are, why are our institutions not functional, um, Mr. Andrews? 
in our institutions do not function is because they were never created to function. Okay. Uh, at one point in time, uh, you see when crises come up, like you have the uh, Anglophone crisis, mm -hmm. and then you see Mr. Bia put in place the Bilingualism Commission. I say that commission was never created to function, but I think that they rather seize an opportunity that there's a real problem that needs to be solved in the society, but they rather take us an opportunity to create a commission or an institution to compensate their friends. In politics. Are you saying that they've seen it, uh, for example, uh, the President of the Republic refused the Senate from doing its job, for example, checking or looking at the implications of the just uh, contested uh, phone tax. Did they expect the President to come and tell them what to do? I will, before I get to that, I can yeah. from the era of the Balinasian okay. Commission. Okay. When that commission is created, for instance, with respect to the Anglophone crisis, mm -hmm. how is that related? to the root causes of what the people were asking. asking. And that's why I say some of the commissions are created not in the intention of having them work, because even if they work, they will not be addressing the root problems that the people do raise. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, the child comes back from school and tells you that I need a textbook in school for this particular subject. And then you prefer to offer him a pair of shoes when he has asked for a textbook. He's not going to use that pair of shoes to study in class. People raise issues. But Mr. Bia creates commissions that are not related to the issues that are raised. Now, you are talking about the Senate. The truth is that I don't see any difference in this country between the Senate and the, 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 the National Assembly. Yeah, but and now, okay, go on. I don't see the relationship between the two. Now, secondly, I have said it is rather the, the, there are institutions that are created to rather compensate political friends because, in reality, like someone was, or like you say, or you asked, should they wait for Mr. Bia to come in? We, if you have read the novel Animal Farm, you will understand that at one point in time, the animals elevated their leader, Napoleon, to the position of a god, yeah. where whatever thing he said mm -hmm. was gospel truth, right, yeah. and no other person had the right to contest. In Cameroon, even the diehard supporters of the regime will tell them Mr. Bia is the one who has the mandate. And so when he appoints you, it is a favor he has done to you. So what happens, therefore, is that whether he appoints you a senator or what, appoints you a minister, whatever thing, you wait for high instructions from him to do whatever thing you are supposed to because if you bring in your own personal initiative and you do something that can actually solve the problems of the people but which goes contrary to what he believes in as your creator it becomes a problem because at, in that case you, you you now become more popular in the eyes of the masses than he mr dear paul so you must wait for instructions from him before you act you mr javis says something quite important that when you are outside you may not understand politics till you get into it it's not even like all our ministers are bad when it comes to competence. Some of them really can do great in, in, in their offices. But the problem is, what you will be doing there, is it in line with what your creator, Mr. Bia, wants? At times, no. And that is why you have, you, you, you have no choice, therefore, than to wait until they instruct you on what to do. And that is why I, I, I was answering by simply saying, our institutions cannot work because Mr. Bia himself is not willing to have them work. And it comes back to what we earlier discussed here about um, uh, leaders who don't do the right thing. And all. They don't do the right thing, yes. If you, if, if, if I'm the head of an institution, maybe I should be using Dr. Sita right here. He has an institution. There is no way he can appoint his deals of studies and all and they are not delivering. And he keeps using the same deals of studies and complain that they are not working, but he maintains them in office. It does not make sense. It means that the problem is with doctor. It means that his own doesn't understand exactly what he wants. Because if you are appointing a dean of studies in, an, in a faculty, you know what he should deliver. And if he's not doing it, you step in to either bring him back to the rail or you simply bring in some other person who can do the job. Let's come back to our country. There are people, civil society, and even individuals at home and abroad who have proposed solutions, who have proposed things that could be done in this country. Why not keep out of the CPDM cabal and get neutral persons who are not of that milieu to also come in and try something new? Must someone belong to the CPDM to be able to work in this country as a, as a citizen and be accepted? No. But that's the conception they give Cameroonians today. You must belong to their system before your idea is accepted. And at the end of the day, you understand, therefore, that when you even propose an idea at the end of the day, they don't judge you by virtue of what you propose. They start by judging by virtue of where you come from. Okay. They start by judging from where you belong to before they know if your idea could be accepted or not. So their institutions are created to compensate the financially. Let me come back to the Bilingualism Commission. What is Prime Minister, if, uh, the, yeah, anyway, let me call Prime Minister, His Excellency um, uh, Peter Mafan, what is he doing there? <laughs> One man who occupies five, six, seven, eight functions alone in the country at that age, is it because he's the only 
only person? I don't think so. You there are other persons who can do better. Mm. So even if the balance yeah, question has something to do, uh, at least I want to think that yeah. other persons could also come in and we try them. Okay. It's rather unfortunate that we think that one person can handle seven functions alone. At one point, that you, are, you cannot really be competent because those are high-level functions that demand a lot of okay, work. Thank you, Dr. Nick. I wish uh, all these old CPDM guys should understand um, how this uh, together. James watching from Germany. Uh, Mr. Liu, you can clearly see that uh, we need to manage our resources, okay? Uh, stop calling, please. Senators are too old. Look at the head <laughs> of the Senate. He can't work. Look at Chief Mukete. Um, actually, what is the role of these senators? Okay. Uh, James from Germany, good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Yeshua Mo, writing from Douala. Yes, President Paul Bia came to power on the 6th of November 1982. 6th of November 2020 makes him 28, 38 years in power. Now, there is nothing that I have drawn from this man, government, since I was born in 1984. Two years after he came to power, a coup d'etat and 1986 economic crisis and the educational reforms of the 1990s coupled with multipartism and many related ills. Mr. Liu, 80 years down the line, I cannot lie, the Napoleon of Africa and, the, and his kangaroo crew have done totally okay. <laughs> okay, uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. The balance sheet of Mr. Bia is uh, 38 uh, wasted years, no good roads, no good schools, and education system zero, no future for the youth. For me, his only achievement is to put army in the Anglophone areas in Cameroon. Fred Fang, writing from uh, Mutengene. Hello, Mr. Liu, I love your program. Firstly, the president was not elected by the people. Power was handed to him, so he doesn't even know his job description. Okay. Uh, Ketu Roland writing from uh, Bermenda, I don't think so. Uh, hi, it's Brandon Kaur from Limbe. Keep up with the show. I'm enjoying it. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Liu, please, the uh, volume is very low. Um, please, you guys should look into that. Uh, anything that concerns Cameroon, I don't want to hear. The nation <laughs> can't never be driven because everybody there in the government is about 80 years. So, Cameroon can never have peace, okay? Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Liu. Great input from the panelists. Mr. Bia is helpless and his leadership has become ineffective over time due to his choice of collaborators. Mm -hmm. Greetings to Ate Solomon. Metro Pierrot is writing from Boya. Good evening to you, uh, Council. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Mick Bear Patrick from Mutengana. I love your <coughs> program so much. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, uh, greetings to you all. I will concord with Javis. Cameroonians collect, uh, Cameroonians collect 50k to vote for Bia. We should be ashamed to say Bia's picture plays a vital role in Cameroon. When Cameroonians will start doing the right thing and stop the blame game, things will change for the good. Alem Fabrice writing from Douala. Good evening to you, Alem Fabrice. Uh, Clarion writing from uh, Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. You say hi, Mr. Liu. Do you select messages before reading on your program? You hardly read my messages, and I wonder why. No, Claron, please keep writing. I'll read. There are so many. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, you, I think um, I want to disagree with my brother on the other side uh, mm -hmm. because if you are Doctor Dick is a CPDM, mm -hmm. but he, the fact that he doesn't act based on what the party solely says. It doesn't mean that the CPTM policies are entirely bad. There are some that are bad, yeah. and there are some that are good. It doesn't mean that BR has been in power for over 38 years. Is he's totally a failure? No. When you assess some points, he has some pitfalls, he has some successes, and he has some undefined platform. We cannot just say that totally. This is it. This is why I disagree with him. The, the one reason is greed. Cameroonians are greedy. If a president <coughs> appoints you to do a job. And you see a party, you see the party line, and you see that if you do this, the party will, 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 will hammer on you. Do it, and let the party hammer on you. The first person will learn. The second person, that's how come the, the, the awareness start growing. Let me give you examples of people who have been given jobs under the government, and they do it diligently, and the same government still keeps them. It is not that the government keeps you because you must talk to party line. I will give you an example. You know, look at let's go back to um, Donga Mountain Division. Look at someone like um, Gala Gerard. Look at someone like uh, 
full, Minister Fu Kalisu's gentry. Now they have their own issues, but when you look at the activity that they are doing at the home front, I'm looking at the home front, I'm not looking at the, 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 the Oyeyeye policy that when they can't they preach Oyeyeye, I'm looking at what they do, the impact of the common man in their lives. Because if you are an MP, the mayor of Boya, it's not Bia that tells him of what to provide water in Boya, what to provide electricity, what to empty the garbages, what to, 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 to construct Moya market, which is highly muddy, but one of the best in terms of the most populated market, food market in, in the entire southwest region and subsequently uh, providing food in the entire uh, uh, Cameroon or some parts of Cameroon. It is not Bia that will tell him. It is not Bia that will tell the ministry, the, the SDO, to stop giving uh, Mutengene land to non-natives. And it's not Bia. So people need to take up their initiative. I believe it is a triple helix. I like explaining the triple helix system. The triple helix system simply means that we have Bia at the edge and his ministers and his cabinet. We have the common man at the left and we have opposition party now at the right, the triple helix. If the minister up and Bia is failing, uh, they're failing. Now we have the opposition and the common man at this, it's a triangle. Now, if that is failing, what becomes of these two sides? Invent a pyramid. So we have an inverted pyramid and you, you empty the garbage. But we don't do that. We simply want to say, you know, I work in the private sector. I'll give you that the highest corruption is not even in the government sector. The highest corruption of this country is in the private sector. When you start looking at how corrupt people are, you send someone, somebody who do a budget, and you look at how a room of people, which is 3,000, in the private sector, I've seen it, four right, 6,000. Is it Bia that comes and says 6,000? That's what I say that yeah, it but, begins... But, but, but at the end of the day, why why are these things not being checked? No, the issue they are not being checked. Are they not doing it because they are not... Uh, no, they are not no the they issue are is... He stated that it, when the head is spoiled, uh, the, the tail is spoiled. Okay. I want to conclude by saying that when we start by at individual level, you as I'm um, at my media premier, you, you when you move forward with a good leadership spirit, he, Dr. Nim moves with a good leadership spirit, he moves out with a good leadership spirit, it starts by resonating and bringing out a new Cameroonian, a Cameroonian, a Cameroonians that do not just look at the ABC syndrome. In Cameroon, we have the ABC syndrome. Accuse, blame, and condemn. If it's not John, it's Peter. If it's not Peter, it's James. We have the ABC syndrome. It is so deep in us in our system that we don't take personal initiative. Okay, we don't take uh, personal initiative. Initiative Ati, uh, do you think uh, like uh, some CPDM uh, members uh, looking at their balance sheet? Uh, many will tell you that uh, when Bia came to power, we had just uh, three universities in Cameroon. We had <coughs> Changandri and uh, Yaoundé, but today they count uh, many, and that we had very few lycees. We have many of them. Do you think that from the educational standpoint, point, um, there are many scores? Uh, yes, goals scored by President Bia already. Uh, totally, I will agree on that. Because when I was coming here, I did a, a, an assessment. We, we have quite a good number of universities. If you look at even our neighboring Nigeria, it's not all the states in Nigeria have universities. Um, but the, the question is whether these universities really have infrastructure and they are providing the services that are needed and uh, uh, the, the staff are well taken care of and what is the result? The results are that Cameroonians are very intelligent mm -hmm. and they are very qualified in position. But despite all creating all of these uh, universities, all of these institutions, and putting them out there and training Cameroonians, when those same Cameroonians come out, uh, the, the job market becomes very challenging for, for, for them. And somebody mentioned here that when they travel out of the country, when they go out of the country, you find them very competitive. Uh, that's very true. A lot of young Cameroonians are very competitive out there, out of the country, and they're really making it big. But the challenge is that when they come here back at home, it is difficult for them to fit themselves in. And so it becomes a challenge when you create all of these institutions and you train Cameroonians who are you have proven their worth, but they, you are unable to absorb them in the system. We, 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 we've complained about there is nobody to replace the head of state. It's a very funny statement. After creating all of these institutions and training Cameroonians, and we have proven their worth, and we still complain that there is nobody to replace the president, uh, it's, it signifies one thing, that the president himself has failed totally. Because if you fail to produce somebody who will replace you when you're gone, that's the beginning of failure. Uh, the big leaders of this nation are those who have groomed leaders to come up and, repl and replace them. Uh, we, we've had the President Bia's uh, youth, we said the President Bia's youth that have been transformed to the Cameroon uh, Youth Council. Uh, today, if you look at the Cameroon Youth Council, uh, 
the, the policies have not shifted quite really from uh, the policies of the President B.S. You if you look at the Cameroon Youth Council today, it is still about uh, the same policies but different name. So uh, but when you look at these uh, young people that are really, really competitive out there, and they have proven their word, and <coughs> the system is unable to absorb them. And you find the government still recycling the same people. They fail here, they take them and put there. They fail here, they take them and put there. And you find them in the same circle. So basically, the president, uh, uh, I'll be very objective to say that, in terms of, uh, uh, of, of education, the president has scored a good mark there. I will not be, 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 uh, I'll be selfish to say he has okay. not scored a good mark there, because I'm not of the CPDM. It's not I going am. to be objective yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I will say I it openly. I don't, I don't, I don't, but the question now is how I don't know whether I don't know, I don't know, I don't know whether uh, Dr. Ningwanyam will agree with you. He is of the CPDM <laughs> and <laughs> also uh, a stakeholder in education in Cameroon. But uh, why you why you compliment? Oh yes, what he just said. Yeah. I want to ask you this question. Uh, the President of the Republic has been President of the Republic, mm -hmm. National President of uh, the CPDM, and uh, yes, CNU and uh, the mm -hmm. CPDM. And there is always a flu between the state and the party uh, with uh, many persons considering that most of national policies are actually hashed within the party and that uh, many persons are using the parties to engage in uh, some unscrupulous acts that, will, that actually run off the think, state. Um, the question you are asking is a very, very important question. I remember last time I had a debate here with Barista Achu where, where I was saying that the CPDM ought to be progressive. Mm -hmm. And then he was saying that it is best for them to be where they are to continue to do the things they used to do in 1960. So, 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 so that is the problem. That's exactly the same problem that you are bringing up. That said, you know, TV time is very, very precious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would rather queue up from where Solomon left, mm -hmm. Ate left, because he was saying something important, though he was looking at it with the, with the, with the spectacles of a baby, so he would not be seeing <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> he would not be seeing what I'm saying, so I must, I must say it the way it's supposed to be said. Yeah. So because we are speaking to 25 million Cameroonians out there to tell them that we have been looking at the different set of uh, measuring rods and getting it all wrong. You know, when we started, I said that Cameroonians have a general problem. Number one, they don't understand problems. Number two, they don't know how to solve problems. And number three, they don't know how to create wealth. That's where all our problems go around these three, th three basic observations and principles. Now, what is school for? School is to train someone to understand principles and to understand problems. And school also trains you to solve those problems. The question is, have, has, uh, our, have our school systems been training us to understand problems? Because how do you get to understand problems? You get to understand problems by studying principles. And once you study those principles, you study them in two ways. Number one, you, 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 you get the theory about the, the problems and the background to the problems, and then you learn the skills of how to deal with the problems that arise from there. Now you will realize that in our school system, uh, we, we, which is based on the logical mathematical uh, uh, for, um, uh, frame, we, we are not aware of the other intelligences that the children have. And therefore, and then even the way we have set up that education, which was given to us by the white man in 1960 just to help our children to read and write. That's why you have people going hey, f degree in this, degree in that, degree in that. But they cannot use those degrees to solve the current problems in the community. Those de degrees are irrelevant to the problems in the community. That is why we might have so many universities so we think that by having so many universities, having thousands of students in the universities, having a lot of people with masters and PhDs, having a lot of people, professors coming on television and telling lies, having, 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 having a lot of people graduating from School of Agriculture who don't know how to grow a grain of rice or fish, uh, that is not success. And you would think that because, you see, if you look at the crop of our children who go abroad, there are two categories of people who go abroad. People who are able to jump ship because they have inherent capacity. <coughs> Whether you train them here badly or so, they are intelligent enough to adapt to the new system and learn how, what it takes to work in that system. Because they are able to adapt and work in that system doesn't mean that it was because you gave them a good foundation. It's wrong. They are able to think out of the box and they are multidimensional and, mo and can multitask and they can get it. 
but our system trains 80 percent of the people who cannot do that and there, 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 there are those who are left here so some other people too will go like to america and so on there are people who, who are part of this crumb when they go to america they stay doing the ten the ten dollar per hour job and they will, they will never graduate from there so you have this class of people then you have the very top ones who make it it, it is the law of nature it doesn't matter even if you come even if it's an orphan that law of nature allows that 5%, 10% will make it under sun and rain. So because people can make it under sun and rain, it's not a credit to what the school system is doing in Cameroon. No. So what am I saying? Our school system is not good enough. I'm saying it clean and clear because we change it. We have a lot of youth problems in Cameroon. Why? Because we're training people who are not useful. So see what the Chinese, the, the, the China is doing very well, and China has changed to be a, 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 um, a world power, or have, has, has done so well, because in the last 30 to 40 years, you know, let's say 40 years ago, the president who, who was there before this one, or their chairperson, or whatever you call him, did something very significant. He changed 70% of all the universities in China to become polytechnics. Then he changed the policies and sent many of his children outside to Germany, America to go and steal technology and bring it back. That's what he did. And then you, you will now see that they are very developed and that development has got nothing to do with democracy and elections. So we'll be crying here democracy and elections when the bottom line is that we, are, we don't even know what to do when given the power. So the bottom line is to know what to do. And you will now ask the question, so what kind of education do we really need for Cameroon? What we have now in education is no use. This is what we need to do. Change the educational system. Go from A to B. Walk, walk, run on these rails and you make it. What do we do? Go to South Korea. Go to Singapore. Go to Malaysia. Go to Finland and gather their curriculums from nursery school to university. Now you are thinking that there should be a clear paradigm shift in a way. Clear education. paradigm shift. Forget about this nonsense that you are calling education in Cameroon. It's nonsense. Watch my lips. It's nonsense. <laughs> I have been around the world. I have studied in I have studied in Cameroon. I studied in CPC Bali. I studied in QS. I studied in the University of Nairobi. I studied in the University of London. After that, I have traveled been to Germany, to America, to, uh, to, 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 to Abu Dhabi, no, no, Saudi, what is that place again? Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia, no, no, Saudi Arabia, that, uh, this, this, this rich place in, in Qatar. No, no, the next one, next, by oh, Egypt, maybe. Yeah, United Arab Emirates. Yeah, that's it, um, that's the city there, yeah, good. Dubai. And then I have been to China twice or thrice, I can't remember, and I have seen what others are doing, and what we are doing here is complete bullshit. This is it. How do you know that your university system or your school system is working? I give every Cameroonian, every minister there, everybody a challenge. You import rice and fish for 300 billion francs every year. And yet you have all these universities and you have whatever, and none of your children can grow a bag of rice. That's the problem. It's much, it's much more difficult to train your children to make these phones than to grow rice. So you see, what is the point training children and having all these universities when you cannot grow the food that you eat? That is the point. And you see, uh, Leo, you, you saw that the president signed a text the other day appointing some people to the Syria Green Board or something like that. Yes. And that, yes, triggered, yeah, and that <laughs> triggered my mind again because that Syria Green Board was put in place for the first time in 2008 when there were the food crisis. And the Syria b b Green Board was just created to, to, to try to see how they could, they could buffer the problems at that time and make sure that people had something to eat. So it was but okay that they should go out there, import some rice and do things and bring down, drop down the prices. Okay, uh, but what they were supposed to do after that, six months afterwards, was to open rice farms, bring tractors and train children and so on to be growing the rice. But since then, t it's 10 years... No, I don't know what they are doing. <laughs> but the bottom line is... We, uh, we keep importing, we keep, we keep putting people there to be importing rice. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Importing rice and fish. Good evening, Mr. <coughs> Adil. I'm Edwin Nkain. Uh, Dr. Nick, you are a great man with uh, great ideas ahead. Ahead, I'm strongly behind you. Doctor, have you ever proposed ideas to this uh, government? I don't know whether doctor has a question for you, for an answer for you. Please tell uh, Mr. Javis we should not pretend. Mr. Bia is of no use to Africans in general. His damages to Africans are more than what Corona, okay? <laughs> Let him and his cabal leave us alone. Tal from Boom, good evening to you. Uh, 
Mr. Javis, your way of talking is gradually changing. You are not the person we used to know <laughs> on this program. Good evening to us all in the house, okay? Uh, Mr. Van is writing from uh, Douala. Uh, what do you want him to say? Hmm. Why can't the CBDM listen to Dr. Uh, to Dr. James? Is writing from uh, Germany. Good evening, Mr. Liu and all panelists. Please, uh, it's important to note that 38 years of beer is a total failure. Cameroon is literally a dead uh, trap considering the bad roads. In short, uh, the infrastructure level is awful. We need a change of government. Luis is writing from uh, Dubai. Good evening, Mr. Liu. The truth is uh, the day the president will learn how to move around like late President Ahijo, things will change. Man Tapa is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening to you, Tapa. Good evening uh, to you all, Mr. Luted. Eight years, uh, the uh, Paul is far, is too much. Uh, he should step down. We know we put you there, but we are tired. Papa, please step down. Sandrine is writing from uh, Bermuda. Boni from Boya says uh, greetings to you, Mr. Kum and the panelists. I think the greatest achievement of President Paul Bia in his 38 years in power is the bringing in of the B force and the competition of his friends with the government. Uh, okay. Good. Hi, good evening, Mr. Bia, just there uh, by himself. We all know that this country will start to be Cameroon after 2035. No matter how we talk, nothing will change. Uh, Titi is writing from Boya. Uh, hello, Mr. Liu. The most vital legacy Mr. Bia has given to us is by creating three presidents in one Cameroon. Sisi Siku behind bars, come to under house arrest, and himself, which we only see on pictures and in administrative offices. <laughs> what a legacy. Okay, Clarion is writing from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and to everyone on the panel. Bia's leadership has overdue. We need a change. Juan is writing from uh, Yaoundé. There's one message I want to read. Good evening, Mr. Kum. What the program we keep up. We are behind you. Ngong Ivo writing from uh, Tiku. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's look at uh, the fight against uh, tribalism, nepotism, and, and the like. Uh, do you think the president has helped to curb it, or it has uh, been encouraged as we live in Cameroon today? Well, the fight against tribalism, I don't, you know, uh, there are so many things that um, uh, Cameroonians, maybe at the level of the civil society, mm -hmm. do for the country. Cameroonians at the level of the opposition do for the country. Mm -hmm. Cameroonians as individuals do for the country. And uh, at the end of the day, we may be tempted to think that Mr. Bia has a hand in all of that, which is not true. When you ask if he has been successful in fighting uh, tribalism, mm -hmm. I will say no. Okay. It is seen even at the level of his own government. Yeah. Look at his ministries. Look at his directors. Look at all the persons he appoints. Go and find out their origins. At least I'm um, talking to a journalist, and I believe you always carry out your investigations before you talk with your, with your audience. Go and find out the audience. Eighty percent of his government is made up of people of particular regions that we know of. Now, if that is the way we fight tribalism in a girl in a country, then we may say he has also succeeded in, at that level, which I don't think so. And uh, you understand that as a consequence of that, the country therefore finds itself where it is today because some people feel that they have been outrightly kept out of the system. They have been outrightly kept out of the country because it is believed when a minister in a country stands up to declare that people from a particular region can never lead the country, then you understand what we are saying. And that's the impression they give. And now you, em you, 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 you empower people, you appoint people into offices, and then they see them as individuals, transform an institution into a family something. Last two, three weeks, Cameroonians were bubbling about the, 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 the Enam issue, where one person will take 13 members of his own family in one session. I, I, I read a comment someone made sarcastically on social media, and he said even um, Lake Kaji in his own company could not take 13 of his children at once to work in his company. At least he takes once at a time. But when somebody takes seats at a NAM, for instance, a national institution, and then he takes 13 members of his own family, and he places there, and we say we should not blame Mr. Bia because he did not ask the person to do that. He, okay, he didn't ask the person, but the person did it. And so what sanctions followed? Nothing. It means that he condones with it. It means that to him he sees nothing wrong with that. 
So, Mr. Kum, I don't think that Mr. Bia has done anything good for this country. I, anyway, I don't know. It's, it's rather unfortunate. My opening statement here when I came in was that Mr. Bia's accession to power in this country from 1982 was a catastrophe. It is a national catastrophe. And I said, this day to me is a, supposed to be a day of national money. And uh, even if, I, even if I, were, I were to go back to agree with Javis when he said Cameroonia should sit and reflect, I think Cameroonians need to be reflected on how to let Bia go because he has seized the country and has transformed it into a personal something. He appoints people from particular regions and then some of them have the guts to openly declare that some other people from the same nation can never lead that country. Mm -hmm. So I think that he has only contributed, contributed in dividing Cameroonians mm -hmm. instead of uniting them. And that's why I always like to tell people, those who insist that he has, he prays um, uh, maybe unity and all one of peace, I always like to say, if there had been peace in this country till maybe 2016 or so, I would rather say this stands to the opposition because we have not had opposition leaders in this country who are bloodthirsty. Let me take somebody like Funzi, for instance. If he was a bloodthirsty leader, perhaps he should have picked up arms by since 92, for perhaps to, 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 to send this fire on, on flames. But I rather think that the person who has been threatening national unity in this country is Mr. Bia and his regime, because all what he has done is to provoke the people, and it's rather unfortunate that Cameroonians have become so inactive to what is happening. They don't, they don't react, because if you ask me as uh, the National Congress Party, uh, uh, Secretary for the, for the PAP, what we tell Cameroonians is that they should be able to go out there as a person in a non-violent demonstration to let Mr. Bia and the international community understand that we are sick and fed up with him and his regime. Okay. We no longer want him at all because I don't think somebody said in Zian today when they were celebrating that the people of Zian will soon be coming out of their hardship and over not. Zian is one of the richest divisions we have in this country in terms of resources and everything. But now they don't even have a road. And you will hear an elite of the CPD who tells the people it is now. So you take 38 years in power okay to 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 check what is now they will come out of and like somebody asked me a question a few minutes ago that can we not say renovating um uh, the immobile there are more in yaoundé is an achievement how can you take 38 years to renovate a structure that was already built and kept it doesn't good, make sense good evening mr liu the truth is uh bia has actually done much and has kept uh, to almost all his promises he talked of grand ambition and nobody questioned the direction of the, this ambition. <laughs> now he's doing his thing, fulfilling his ambitions, though in the negative, raising a people who look up upon him as God, and we complain. Tiku Felix is writing from Boya. Good evening to you, Tiku and family. Good evening, Mr. Leo. I buy Dr. Nick's ideas. Uh, look at the agriculture faculty in Boya. We pay huge sums of money as fee, of which it will yield no fruits. <laughs> What do you mean by we eat no fruit? Uh, this one is good. Even if sir, we all just have to forget about this country. Can you imagine they use Cameroon flags to cover the casket of the kids who died because their country failed them? And Michael from Yaoundé. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Michael. Uh. <laughs> good evening, Mr. Liu. It's Ngu from Bermenda. I really love your program and I am interested with the ideas of. Dr. Nick uh, to apply in our country for a better uh, Cameroon. I hope the CPD makes use of that. I wrote a concur which we all know the result and outcome. Cameroon educational system is very low and doesn't make sense. Too much bribery and corruption. Change is all we need. Change in all the education. Mr. Bia and Co. are one man, one belle and uh, only them survive. We need change. Toto is writing from uh, Boya. Evening, Leo, to all in the studio. Bia's only balance sheet is changing his name from Paul Bia to Bia Paul <laughs> during, <laughs> during elections. <laughs> Elvis is writing from my four. <laughs> Greetings uh, to all in the panel. I hail you, Dr. Nick. You inspired me this evening. You are indeed a raw material to be used in this country. Isidore. Mekum is writing from uh, Bamenda. Uh, hello, sir. This is Nginya Martin. Can we know what is wrong with our most educative media house, my media prime? It's been a while. We have not been able to watch your programs. Please, um, some persons are writing. My media prime is available. Uh, just do a research on your TV. If you are no longer receiving my media prime, do a research on your TV. You get us. 
Okay. Um, good evening, Bertrand from Kumba. Mr. Leo, what is left in this country is just fatherland because peace and work have been killed <laughs> and tampered with. This is BS legacy after 38. Uh, yes, good evening to you, Mr. Liu. This is Clinton writing from Douala. And Maya, the way Dr. Nick always hits the most relevant points, I used to be his student and his great man. I don't know what is, was his great man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, uh, uh, yes. You, um, I, want, I, want, I want you to look at um, agricultural. The President of the Republic has called on Cameroonians to embrace agriculture. I'm sure that was 2013 or 2014 that uh, the youth should go to the farm <laughs> what what inputs have been given to the youth um, and so much has been talked about second generation <laughs> agriculture in cameroon where are we with that the, there is the second standard of cameroon's national anthems goes there's a part that says instilling them the love and gentle ways regard of errors of the past and if you come now to the reframe which is um land of promise, land of glory, and you look at equally the conclusive part, which is um, we, we, we joy and love and peace. And I ask myself, when we look at the agricultural perspective uh, uh, scenario in Cameroon, um, looking at the universities that we have, if they are instilling in these people the agricultural techniques in love and gentle ways if they are instilling in them the agricultural techniques that will benefit Cameroonians, that will bring them the peace, love, and unity. Because when we look at the educational system, the agricultural, not just the agricultural system per se, because if you look at the, ag the agro pastoral show which happened in Ebolua, presided over by the head of state, I think that was when he made uh, that remark that Cameroonians should move to the farm, to embrace the farm. And there was a picture of the president we saw in the tractor and, you know, in the pineapple plantation farm and since then the picture we never got no we never understood or understand how the the, the how the farm ended the farm is there. and the farm. secondly farm. if you look at the the, the, agri, the after the agro pastoral show um where even the, it was attended by the, the nijon fundi at the time you ask yourself the tractors that were supposed to be given to people farmers in this area to do their cultivation uh, where are the tractors they have been uh, abandoned allowed to follow like the like we have pastoral nomadism where you allow a land to follow so that you come and cultivate in the next year thinking knowing that fertility might have resumed now those are steps to understand to see that there is no what we call an effective implementation strategy there is a policy you institute a policy it must be backed by implementation strategy but the sad reality here is that the cameroon's educational system has been based on matricule oriented it is matricule syn syndrome oriented so the matricule syndrome makes you not to think it makes you to see every agricultural or industrial per uh, industrial facility as more of having a matricule to sustain a 250,000 franc monthly which you may not be going to work from Monday to Friday but going to work at your disposal so we have a matricule oriented education so you will not blame an ordinary agricultural student who cannot who cannot do farming who cannot just uh, uh, harness even in digital uh, agriculture we have digital agriculture and greenhouse agriculture we have empty abandoned buildings left and right and we don't see these buildings being used even the so-called and Entrepreneurial universities don't run businesses. And you ask yourself, how can you call yourself an entrepreneurial university? You don't own a business. You call yourself an agricultural school. You don't own a farm. You don't even own a series of uh, exhibition farms where students can practice. My issue here comes with a, an implementation strategy. The implementation strategy is so poor in such a way that it is based on a top bottom approach, not a bottom top approach. We keep seeing uh, the, bottom, the top bottom approach is coming because of magical syndrome. Ask any kid. Even if those who are going to uh, private universities, doctor will bear me weakness. Even those who are going into schools I have trained, at the end of the day, you, are, you will see they will say they want to write the concours. They want to do this. It's because of the way the educational system has been tailored. But when we tailor our educational system to meet existing realities, to meet uh, the, the, the hands-on uh, activities that we see in our, in, our, in our society, it will change. And the problem comes with the issue of mentorship in universities. Because the fact that 
private universities have not been given that favor to automatically design their program to meet the need rather to meet the office need of matching single. That's why I have a problem. All private university owners in Cameroon, they don't have the ability to issue degrees or diplomas. You must have a mentor university and you must dance to the tone of that mentor university. And that mentor university define how you go with your curriculum, define how you structure. Let's say I have an agricultural school. I want to train agriculture students of a different perspective. But they, they my, mentor question, university. my question my question to you is simple. President Pia wants Cameroon to move towards second generation at uh, agriculture. He wants the youths to embrace agriculture. Agriculture, uh, to do agriculture, we need land. Uh, we need uh, maybe capital to get the instruments to, yes. Do they have it? We have it, but the problem now comes in okay, with... Okay, you, the youth, you have been given... No, we said we have the, the... You are talking about land and the, the various infrastructures that we need. The problem is implementation, like I said. Look at University of Boya. A couple of weeks ago, we went and we saw that farm... Uh, that was allocated to the university students uh, were destroyed by some people who claim they want to claim they want they want that to use that for, okay. for a village okay. and okay. you see the entire it was destroyed and no compensation given to the school of agriculture farm practice a big land and they, they had a, a site that they wanted to expand their cattle ring and it was totally okay okay you are, you are limiting yourself to the students who are doing doing who are studying at the agriculture the, the, can, okay. can, I, can i just i'm looking at the children who are in in jakiri today who have been sent to go and do farming the children who are in maybe in melon who have been sent to farming are there accompanying measures to get them effectively farm solomon is your 10 minutes agriculture okay. let me talk okay, about it because yeah, for the I sake do. of the people no, out i understand there. Agriculture is the mainstay that will get us out of our poverty. It's that industry that we all need to embrace. But we, do, we need to do agriculture in a way that beautiful girls, young, handsome boys, are happy doing the agriculture. And I have thought about it for a very long time. It's just that I'm, I don't have all the resources. But, you know, uh, many years ago, I saw girls young women dry during I think it was a female uh, 8th March something or was it 20th May these young women were driving caterpillars and trucks and so on on the 20th May Avenue and I was so inspired by that so we just need to put what it takes in place and train our girls train our boys and make the farm job make farming a sport make farming something great make farming something that we all love and then and then give them the tools, give them the capacities, and I will be done. Like Javis was saying, we don't know how to, like I had, I had said, we don't know how to solve problems. If we knew how to solve problems, we would always craft it in such a way that it would yield fruit. You see, like I said before, a country like America, as big as America, it's very rich. It's one of the richest countries, the, 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 the richest. Um, probably China has overtaken them, but I don't know. But it's the richest country. And you just need to take away agriculture and they will collapse. And again, I was thinking, I think there are more than about 1.4 billion people in China, if I'm not mistaken. And there are about 1.6 or so billion people in Africa. And this is the interesting thing. China is able to grow enough food to feed 1.4 people. And 1. still 1.4 billion people. people 1.4 billion people. And still feed Africa. Are you, are you getting the irony? And still feed Africa. So there's a problem. And like I said, we just need to think and think it right. In, 20, in that 2013, President Paul Biya made available 121 billion for youth programs. Mm -hmm. An emergency program. Emergency, for, yes. Yeah. But that emergency program, some very smart people took it and said they were going to make footballs or something for children, and that was it. And you can't hear anything about it. And I remember being on a, on a, on a CRTV program with Mr. Wine Pongam saying this is the way the 1.2 billion should be used. In fact, if you had asked me how should that have been used, I, I said at the time, I said, look, we have about 356, um, uh, um, what do you call them, subdivisions in the nation, you know, and you have, there's a, there's a credit facility with, with, with what we call the Exim Bank, the Exim Bank of America, there's also an Exim Bank in, in Canada and so on. You could go to this Exim Bank. You know, take like the one point one hundred and twenty-one billion. Go to the to 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 America to the to, to the company that is making caterpillars and tractors and all this heavy equipment. Buy 
you know, go into a, um, sign sign a partnership with uh, with with those companies using the Exim Bank formula, you would you you would give them let's say 100 billion, and you'll be able to take equipment worth a um, thousand billion. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then you come and share this equipment into into pools, into technological pools in every in every commune. And then now you recruit children and teach them how to use this equipment to do the roads. They will be able to open all our roads into the interior. You will teach them to do the roads in the town. Teach them to use this equipment to open farms. Because the problem with our farm is that we are still with the cutlass and so on. That's tedious and it's stupid. There's equipment to help you do the, the hard labor. So, for instance, what would we do, for instance, practically? Take some of those caterpillars. Take some youths. Go to that land by Sananga in the Mbam there. You know, do you know how, if you have seen how you can use, you can use um, bulldozers to clear, to clear fields for, for, you take a bulldozer, a D8, and you put over there. You take another bulldozer, a D8, and you put over there. Then you take this heavy chain heavy chain, you link to this other caterpillar and link to this one, give them a space of about 100 meters or whatever, or 50 meters, just as the case may be, and let them drive through the savannah. The, 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 that thing just rakes the grass for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then you come back now with the tractors, uh, and then you you run through and then off route, some routes and so on. And then you do the farm work with the tractors. Teach children these things. Build camps for them where they can, they can be. Show them how these things are done so that you give every youth, let's say, every youth about one hectare of land. Mm -hmm. You provide the seeds, you provide everything so that they can grow the seeds. Use the, teach the children now to be using by their heads to tend <coughs> and, watch, and watch after the plants and the animals. They shouldn't be using their energy to be breaking fire. No, use machines to do that stupid hard work. Then let the children use their brains to grow the food. And then when they grow the food, we do cooperatives so that the cooperatives can buy the food and sell to Gabon, sell to our cities and so on. So you create a system that works. It would have been effective, but they took that 121 billion and played football with it. <laughs> Terrible. I played football with it. Um, 38 years, uh, I don't know, I wanted to ask this question to him. Eh? Uh, no, so but I want, uh, yes, but I want us to look at uh, President Paul <coughs> here because before he became a President of the Republic, this Angokon crisis existed already because he headed a commission that had to do with uh, providing solutions to the problem. 38 years after, mm. there is a war in the southwest and northwest the region. Is that a failure to him or do you think that there are some forces behind who want to uh, put him under very difficult situations. I think that uh, the, uh, President Paul Bia's balance sheet has been very catastrophic, but the most striking catastrophic part of it is uh, the military response to the Anglophon crisis. And, 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 and again, we, 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 we find ourselves in the midst of the Anglophon crisis and we still go to create commissions. We've created, um, uh, I'm sure Dr. Nick will agree with me that we've created more than one commission to respond to the Anglophon crisis af after the military response. And it's, it still ha has, has not uh, solved any problem. We move from the bilingualism commission to other commissions that I don't even know of them. And it looks like we're still going to create other commissions to follow up the commissions that have been created. <laughs> I, so at the end of the day, we're moving around commissions from commissions to commissions. And I think that President Pope, yeah, maybe he inspired by commission because he happened to be part of a commission that was uh, created by President Amadou Haijo to look into the Anglophone crisis some years back before he even became president. But today, the same President Paul Bia at home says that he doesn't know whether there is an Anglophone problem or not. And then he goes to the Paris Peace Conference and says there is an Anglophone problem. And so he keeps on contradicting himself but creating commissions to solve uh, the problem that he doesn't recognize. So it's some kind of paradox. But again, I've said uh, the biggest mistake he has ever made was to declare a military response to the Anglophone crisis. And I think that today, the biggest uh, commission the president should create uh, is to create a commission of, uh, of reconciliation. I don't know if it's going to take a national dimension or dimension or an international dimension, but I, I really think that an international dimension of our, our reconciliation uh, uh, process would really help us because uh, the Anglophone crisis has escalated to a point where we no longer trust ourselves as a nation to sit down and talk about it. We've lost trust amongst ourselves. Uh, the both parties have lost trust to themselves. Even uh, the, 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 
the national mediators such as the civil society who could act as mediators at the local level no longer uh, know whether they should trust the government or they should trust the armed group. So it's becoming more complicated than we thought, and the commissions that have been created have basically failed us. The commissions that we've been creating d decades back have really failed us, and I, I, I think uh, we should have been able to learn the lessons from the, the commissions that have failed us. We saw the creation of the consortium back in 2016 that advocated for a peaceful advocacy, but that, 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 that uh, uh, used a peaceful approach to advocate uh, for the Anglophone problem, which is a legitimate right of Anglophone. But we saw a government that went towards uh, <coughs> these Anglophone leaders who did the consortium, okay. tried to dialogue with them, but the next day we saw them being arrested okay. and they were called terrorists. Okay. And today the situation has escalated to what we are. Okay, it's Sandy Bright from Douala, Mr. Liu. With all due respect, I salute you all. Uh, we are in a country where the educational system is very backward. That is why we lack experts in the agricultural uh, sector. Good evening, Mr. Liu. This man, uh, Popul, after killing uh, okay, uh, Mr. <coughs> Shed, writing from Douala, um, I think we need a president who will be able to see the problems of this country and be able to make ways to solve them, starting with our educational uh, system. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Dr. Nick is really still pew. The CPM syndrome has not taken over him yet. I wish someone listens mm -hmm. to him. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Hello, Mr. Liu. Good evening. I apologize for coming late. Uh, Dr. Nick said it all. CRM have failed and still failing. Their best achievement is not uh, but corruption and tribalism, which he has planted in the minds of Cameroonians. I remember I wrote uh, the entrance exam in Yaoundé as a laboratory technician, and one man asked all of us from the southwest and northwest to be in one hall. More than 2,000 people going in for seven positions of <laughs> medical lab. We will shame Cameroon, London, Musa. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Liu. It's uh, Party Nick writing from Bamenda, Cameroon. It's all education is all a scam. Okay. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu. This is John from Limbe, Mr. Liu. I was expecting the panelists to explain shit on the economy, socially and politically. President Paul Bia has, uh, I believe that explain has a balance sheet. Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. Liu. Cameroon as a political whole from agriculture to the highest ministerial position can never do well with uh, the Bia regime. Daniel is writing from Dubai. Monzi from Limbe says, hi to all. Help me to tell Travis that the system of a country defines what the country is. Being in the public-private sector, the system in Cameroon has trained citizens that can only live on money, corrupt, acquired, okay, corruptly acquired. Beer and, okay, and the cabal, this Monday from Limbe, please, when you write things that are not respectful, I won't read them. Good evening, Mr. Liu, please extend this to the doctor when i listen to him speak i'm so happy but i think something is lacking i would love him to own one of the best hospitals in this country so that when he trains he also employs and others will follow as <coughs> now he's still operating like cameroon government alain is right this is writing from Bamenda. okay <laughs> this is mary writing from Bamenda. i don't want to hear that name again which name are you talking about now, um, <laughs> uh, in, uh, on the 6th of December this year, we are going to have regional elections. Decentralization has uh, been existing in theory since 1996. Are we going to see the full implementation of that process going by what we see already in the making? Let me say, I will just keep out of that question rapidly and discuss something else rather. No, 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 no. no. When I say something else, what I'm saying is this. You are asking, you are talking of regional elections on the 6th of November. Yes. What I'm saying December. Of December. Mm. As a member of the PAP, we don't interrupt elections in this country because we don't need elections because there's no need going for an election in this country. 
we have taken our stance as a political party that anything that has to do with elections organized by this region, we are not and we can never be a party to it. Okay. Because your assessment, we talk about yeah, the assessment of the decentralization process since 1996. That's why I said I was going to keep and talk about something else now because we talk about decentralization. Mm. It has never been and it, I don't think it can ever be under this regime. It takes me now back to the 1.2 billion doctor was talking about in agriculture mm -hmm. because doctor even explained things that are even a little uh i would say more advanced that this regime may even not understand or they simply understand and will not want to implement but i want to bring it back again to maybe let me say a local level this 1.2 billion 121 could 121 billion thank you that could be divided to the 10 regions you see equally maybe they may just say 10 billion per region and then Children, ch the, the children from or youth from each of the regions with respect to their subdivisions and children could apply for subventions from that fund, you see, so that they easily have access to the funds. And then regional delegations of agriculture could dispatch persons to ass assist and accompany them and see how they actually put these funds into practice. But when the government creates or comes up with such an initiative, and then banks all the money in Yaoundé, and a child from my village in Oku or from uh, of a major needs to sit there and apply to Yaoundé to get subvention. You understand, like I earlier mentioned here, that at the end of the day, at times when we criticize the regime, it is not like they do not do things, but that they do things that favor them in their way of doing things. They do it in such a way that the money remains in Yaoundé, then everybody must apply and send to Yaoundé when they claim this decentralization. And now, at the end of the day, what happens is that they sit in Yaoundé and select particular persons that they know and then dispatch the money to a few. And, and so at, at one point in time, you discover that the money that was earmarked to enhance or subvent youth uh, projects in agriculture, at the end of the day, it filters itself into the hands of a few, such that people even sit in ministries, and then they call their cousins and nephews in the villages to fake projects overnight, and then table them and their finance. Why? Because the decentralization is not there, and like I say, I don't think it can ever be there. These are things, this, it comes, it's the same thing with the, the, with the Constitutional Council and other things. These are things that have been on paper for more than 20 years. And like I earlier mentioned, we cannot sit in a country where human beings have a limited lifespan. We shall all die, but the country will stay, like Cardinal Tumi once said. We, shall, we all made the country, we shall all go, but the country will remain. But you cannot sit in government for 38 years and all what you do are promises. All what you do is on paper and you think that we can decree one thing today and it takes 38 years before we start implementing it and you talk about decentralization. Mm -hmm. So that just to tell you that with the December 6th elections, the PAP has nothing to do as far as elections are concerned in this country because when you talk about elections, mm -hmm. Mr. Bia alone has the, or knows the political calendar in this country. Even the people of the opponent, they don't have an idea. Elekam are his people. The Constitutional Council are his people. He sits alone, uses the, 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 the different institutions he has put in place, organizes everything. Once he feels that everything is set for him to declare his own victory, now he tells you guys on a Monday morning that we are voting on Saturday. Okay, very yes, So I want to think that. Not only we had taken our stance never to partake in any elections organized by the system, but the decision is not there, and I don't think that it can ever be there under this particular regime. And I keep, maybe I should be concluded by saying that we say and we keep saying, if Mr. Bia loves his country and he thinks that he can now keep personal interest away from public interest, he should resign alongside his government. Now, uh, very briefly, I want, uh, at least you are in the health domain now, mm -hmm. you should give us uh, an appraisal of 38 years of. Mr. Bia's engagement in health, very briefly, because we're out of time. Yeah, and, uh, health is and a very infrastructure in general. Yeah, he health, health is a very complex thing. And uh, you see, on social media the other day was was a picture of a midwife from somewhere in the north of you know showing mm -hmm. a bamboo bed on mm -hmm. which they do deliveries. So that tells you the the state of health in the country. And as a medical doctor, I would tell you that is very very poor. Um, there was one lady who was challenging that I should come up with a hospital. And if you are listening to me, I've said that I'm going to build a reference hospital in Douala and in Yaoundé. The only thing that I don't have is the resources. If I had the resources, it would be done. It's not an issue of, of authorizations. I'll be given the authorization. That's not a problem because that's where we need to train our children. You know. But the unfortunate thing is I think I'm very serious. <laughs> now, that said, uh, the, 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 the health situation, we really need to do something about it. We are below standards. There's no question about that. The other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, you, you said something about decentralization. Mm -hmm. um, 
just to quickly, you know, say that whether the PAP, in, PAP is going for elections or not is, uh, is, is some objet, in the sense that the problem of this country are not solved by elections. We, 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 we have issues that I tried to show to you, and I demonstrated to you that even if you like to change the CPD and put it today and put the MRC or put the SDF or yeah. put the PAP, or put the PAP, nothing will change because the mindset is okay. it's it, it, it's 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 below bar. That's the problem until you. That mindset goes above. You, you can you can change A and put B or C or whatever. Have the best elections. Nothing will work. We, we as Cameroonians, we need to move forward, and something will work. Now that said. You know, we've been discussing confederation a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, this current this current uh, decentralization with the special status for Anglophones is just something I don't understand. But for this, for the uh, for the West Cameroon East Cameroon problem to be solved, we have said it time and again that number one, as of now, we will need a new dialogue, which is sincere, which is genuine, and which is inclusive to actually face the face the, the issues and deal with them and the major national dialogue did not succeed because when we were going for that dialogue we were going for the, with, with the for the dialogue with a with an old mindset and then like uh, our brother solomon reminded us when his excellency the president paul Bia was at the paris peace, the paris peace summit or whatever you know, talking to Mr. Mo Ibrahim, he acknowledged that in the past they had been trying to change Anglophones into Francophones and assimilate them, which did not work. And therefore, from that time going forward, Anglophones should be given more breathing space and should be left to be their own. But he was making that statement when the major national dialogue had already taken place under the new dispensation, where it was more of tightening the ropes and making sure that Anglophones don't move a step. So you see, so now, when the president made that statement after the, the major national dialogue and resolutions after the national dialogue had been tailored to give something else, it shows that we need a new dialogue which would actually reopen the whole thing again so that we redefine things. So this other decentralization we're having now is just an exercise, but the real thing is going to come. The real thing is going to come and the nation will be, will, will be decentralized at two levels. The first one would be, would you, on that it would be a confederation where we would define West Cameroon and East Cameroon with their governments and everything clearly marked out with their budgets, you know, security, you know, all those things will be defined, clearly defined. Who is president, when is an Anglophone president, when is a Francophone president, when is an Anglophone vice president, and so on. All those things will be clearly defined. Then now, you know, because the Southwesterners are always complaining that Northwesterners are marginalizing them. The people in Manfe, even in the Southwest, complain that uh, Bakwere people are marginalizing them. <laughs> so, the, so, so if you were going just by, and the, the people in Bakwere, they want to be Bak Bak Dwellers, the Dwellers. So it, it's, it's a mix of things. <laughs> so we cannot go by that. So what we're going to do is make sure that we cause decentralization within the confederal states so that Working as West Cameroon, yeah. the people in Southwest can have their breathing space from people in the Northwest because even as they speak, they, my brothers from the Northwest can <laughs> also be very terrible. You know? <laughs> and then, even in East Cameroon, you decentralize so that the people of the South don't sit on the people of Marwa. It's very, very important. And during that decentralization, we make sure that we define the place of governors and SDOs and so on because if you don't sideline governors and SDOs and so on, this country will never develop. Okay. Uh, this country would never develop. I'll take two messages and we are done for today. Uh, from Madame Jackie Bokova, he is having but the third balance sheet. Okay. <laughs> Madame Jackie from Bokova, good evening to you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. The only legacy Mr. Bia has left in Cameroon is to create war in the nation. Okay, Siri. From uh, Yaoundé Pro. can't work, they ask for working experience. How will the students and graduates not to remain jobless? Change, we need to tell the doctor if he is serious. He should fight for a change in medical education. I'm sure he's doing that already. Good evening, Mr. Kung. That only should uh, resign from the CPDM. It doesn't fit him. I don't think his views are really accepted in that party. Tim Bees, writing from uh, Duwala, Atiku Felix is Dr. Nick is an icon gathering knowledge outside and implementing back home. See how many thousands of people benefit from it. 
congrats doctor let the cpm see the difference from uh christ field member and copy his secrets okay uh good evening mr Liu. it's favor from Douala. we are in a country where i have never seen a minister who opted to resign on his or her own uh, good evening mr leo the educational standard in cameroon is very poor school in cameroon is a scam it's egbe writing from limbe cannot be a scam because i am a product of schooling in cameroon mr leo i love your program it's the best my next president will be dr nick james is writing from germany uh, i'm kadiri from greek cyprus hello mr leo tribal extremism ethnic hatred and hate speech such as les anglofu two cubes of sugar graffiti people come no go le mouton strangers second class citizens less intelligent people dogs just to name a few these are what's used by uh the state ministers loyal to the unity palace uh, to tear cameroon apart for the past 38 years in power and nobody has been held responsible okay I have to end here, unfortunately, for this edition of the program. Dr. Nick and Guanyam, thank you for coming to give uh, an appraisal of President Bia's 80 years stay at the helm of Cameroon. Thank you very much. As I said, the President has been trying to <coughs> do his best, but he has people whom he has put in place who care more about themselves. You know, they would, they would tell you that they, they don't want to do something because they think that they were going out of the president's prescriptions. But when they are stealing, they don't ask the president for prescriptions. <laughs> thank you, Tamai Javis, for coming. Uh, thank you, Leonard. Uh, Dr. Jules uh, spoke my mind. Uh, I was about talking about the issue of people not taking responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, Dr. Jules concluded by what I, what I would have uh, equally highlighted. My view, my plea for Cameroonians is that we should move from ABC syndrome, accuse, blame, condemn, but we should start taking individual initiative and responsibility to say that since when the source is dirty, maybe you start from where you see the dirtiness of the source and you start moving and cleaning it begins the change we want starts from me from you and from all of us so it is we and us not Pia and we okay we equally want to say thank you to you mr and jane yes coming from my own yeah thank you very much uh, mr kum and uh, i want to say it's been a pleasure being here with you and uh, i will simply conclude by saying that Cameroonians should take their responsibility and ask Mr. Bia to leave because there is nothing good that can come from him. Mm -hmm. That's all that I can say as of now. And uh, just to also remind, uh, I want to tell Doug that he, he said whether the PAP or which other party, I want to re simply reiterate <coughs> that if actually we have boycotted elections, it's because we actually noted that through elections nothing can come good in this country. And that's why we don't go into such elections. CPP. It's not a matter of the level or what okay. it's Th a matter of the system that can never and does not permit it to happen through elections in this country. Thank you very much, uh, Ati, for coming. Thank you, Leo. And uh, I think that to, to conclude, uh, I'll say that uh, Cameroonians are going through a lot. Their suffering has actually exposed them to be more creative. And I, I think that we cannot completely deny that we've made progress in education. We still have a lot to do, but I think that there's a level of progress that we're making that we should recognize. And what we should be doing, like Dr. Mike mentioned, of, I think the mindset of young Cameroonians have not really been worked upon. There's this mindset of, I just want to have my degree and go out and then I look for a job. We have to work on the mindset of young Cameroonians that they could be job creators themselves. Because I was exchanging with a colleague, a friend of mine, the University of Boya today, and what I heard from him is not something I would like to share on this platform, but I really <laughs> want to say that uh, a lot of young people, we, we, we have the potential that we can turn things around in this country, but we tend not to believe in ourselves. We tend not to believe in our institutions. And the more we don't believe in, an in, in our institutions, the more things become difficult. I know that a lot of things have to be done, but equally we need to start by believing in an institution and thinking that we can use what we have to turn things around. Okay. We want to thank the production team to you, Desmond, Christian, Eli, and uh, to you, Tabi, Tambe Bryant. Uh, we also want to seize this opportunity to wish a happy 38th anniversary for President Paul Bia, because as he said uh, in the company of the French president, he's not president because he wants to but because he can. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.